Morning, Becky. Morning. Um, we were back, if you were wondering. Oh, I didn't know you'd moved out. We were in the flat above the bookies for a few days, but we came back. But we could hear you through the walls. Not unpleasant noise, you understand. Well, that's because we've been here. I, I thought you were over there. It's complicated. So why did you move out? Well, that's even more complicated. Anyway, you're back now. I don't know how long for. We've been in every house in the street by this rate. Have you any spare bedrooms? Yes, just the one, but we, we use it. What for? Oh, guests, lumber. Sounds familiar. Suit us down to the ground. <laughs> Fiona, are you free this dinner time? Yeah, I suppose. Because I think you and me need to talk, don't we? It's all right two minutes ago. Morning. What time's your interview then? Well, I haven't rung yet. It's only half past eight. But nobody there, well, there. Oh, they start at half nine now. I won't leave it too late. Yeah, well, well I'll just have my breakfast first. You're not having second thoughts, are you? No! Only. I was thinking. Oh, come on, Raquel. You were up for it last night. Yes, I know, but it does seem a bit cheeky asking for an interview when you've not been invited, you know. That's how it works. Word of mouth. It's not the head of ICI you're going up for, is it? There'll be loads of girls there. So what chance will I have? As much as anyone else. Then what happened yesterday? They were all over me three weeks ago saying how good I was and they just sank me. So you have to believe in yourself when you go for an interview, don't you? They pick it up if you don't. Look, you know this woman, don't you? If she thinks you're nervous, then she'll make allowances. It's no good, Curly. If I've learnt one thing in life, it's to listen to that little voice deep down inside telling you what to do. You ignore it at your peril. And what's your little voice saying? Well, that's just it. I'm not sure anymore. No, more sense. Gonna take long, is it, Kev? We've got to be on a job at nine o'clock. Well, if I was you, I'd go and wait for a bus. You're going nowhere in this thing, Dad. Why? Well, what's up? Well, your head gasket's blown, your cylinder head's cracked. What does that mean? It means we need a new van, William. You're joking. No. Can't you fix it? Of course I can fix it. Jim could fix it Aye. for that matter, but it's not worth it on this shed. It'd be cheaper to buy a new one. I don't believe it. What are we going to do? Aye, tell me. We've got that rugby club job coming yeah, up, eh? Tell me about it. Couldn't you lend us yours on? <laughs> oh, yeah. And what am I supposed to do? When have you found this hit before? Yeah, that was when I worked for Baldwin. I'm my own boss now. I'd be out of pocket if I didn't have a van to go and do the jobs in, won't I? And anyway, I've got Tony to think about now. I can't go lending out all the equipment without asking him, can I? Yeah. But I'm sorry, Dad. Yeah, yeah. don't worry your head, Jeff. Hey, you've no money. No. I suppose I'd better go and see what I can get at the bank. You were out late last night. I didn't wait you, did I? Oh, no. Did you go somewhere nice? No, not really. But you had a good time? Oh, these Sam's threads are running low. Have you got any in the back? Because you weren't in by one o'clock. I know, because I had to get up about then. I think I'm going to cut out that last cup of tea of an evening. In fact, it were nearer half past before I settled and you still weren't back. <sighs> Look. I stayed out for a bit longer for a change. All right, I am over 21. I've no objection to you staying out. It's nice to see a bit of colour in your cheeks again. Something's bucked you up anyway. Morning. Oh, morning, Roy. What can we get you? I, I just want a packet of chewy mints, if that's all right. Oh, why shouldn't it be? I, I normally get them from the cabin, but uh, they've run out. I yeah. wouldn't have troubled you otherwise. 25p. First time I've ever heard it called trouble, asking for something in a shop. I, I, I like one on the bus to work, you see. If I suck it slow, I, I don't get to the chewy bit till Albert Road. Very nice. Right, well, uh, I won't keep you. Cheerio. Bye. He's jumpy about so much. He lives in the same block as Bill Webster, don't he? Um, not 
Oh, I think he does, yes. Sir. Peculiar chap. Hey, honest, though. No side to him. No? No, I think not. I would say Roy Cropper was as straight as a die. It's not him, is it? Who? Curly. Why you've changed your mind? Who says I've changed my mind? I'm just not sure. And anyway, why should it be him? I don't know. Maybe he doesn't want you to do it. Well, he was encouraging me. I heard him. Yeah, but married couples. What? Don't always say what they mean, seems to me. And don't always do what they really want to, either. How do you mean? Well, he might be telling you to do it because that's what husbands are supposed to say. And you might know he doesn't really mean it. So you find an excuse to cop out so as not to upset him. He was having a go at me at breakfast for backing out. So he was OK about Maidenhead? Oh, yes. I mean, he'd rather I'd not gone, but... Well, what I mean is he'd rather I'd been nearer to home. So he does want you to do it? Oh, yes, of course he does. So all that's stopping you is what you said at breakfast? Yeah. Well, do you want to do it? Oh, yes, I want to do it. So what have you got to lose? Even if you don't get the job, it's not the end of the world. It's not, is it? Numbers by the phone. It's up to you. I got my final solicitor's bill. £1,053. Oh, Liz. How are you going to pay that? Well, there's no problem. I got a cheque for a 1000 from Jim last week. We finally reached an agreement. Very nice. So, the drinks are on you, then. Uh, hang on a minute. I've still another 53 quid to find you. Know? Oh, I'm 20p for a stamp. Will you manage? <laughs> what are you having? <laughs> Take it was a no, then, Wally. Oh, he said he'd think about it, you know, when I paid me overdraft off. I'll tell you, Jim, they only lend it to them that don't need it. Well, our best chance is going to that lady over there, straight into your bank account, £1,000. Do you know, Willie, do you know something? I never should have given it there, I'm telling you. <laughs> Tracy! Hiya, Mum. Hiya! Hiya. You look well. Thanks, so do you. Did you have a good journey? Uh, yeah, fine. Come here. Oh, it's good to see you. Talk to me if you're feeling left out. I'm not proud. I might have to. Look, before you say anything, the last thing I need is a hard time, all right? I feel bad enough as it is after last night. Hey, oh, steady on, steady on. Who said anything about a hard time? I want to know what happened first. Went straight home afterwards, we never got a chance to talk. Yeah, well, can you blame me? Well, no, it's understandable, but if it's not going to happen again, we need to sort out what went wrong, don't we? What do you mean, again? I blew it. It's over. Look, look, if everyone who lost their nerve on stage gave up, there'd be precious few entertainers in the world, believe me. All stars go through that, you know, at some time or other. I take it it was a loss of nerve. I just got... I got fed up. Stood up there, singing me heart out, and they just go on talking. I mean, it's not exactly a vote of confidence, is it? Well, audiences are funny things, you know. <sighs> yeah, hilarious. They couldn't have made it worse if they'd have told me to get lost. At least they'd have felt noticed then. You know Paul Simon used to sing in coffee bars in Soho? Nobody listened to him at first. Three years later, he was filling the Albert Hall. I am no Paul Simon, Alec. Well, not many people are. But you've got something, Fiona, otherwise I'd not be bothering. And you care about what you do, otherwise you wouldn't have walked off. So what are you saying? I'm saying you need three things in show business to make it. Talent, determination and luck. In reverse order. Determination brings its own look, of course, so you need that in spades. Now, have you got determination? When I really want something, yeah. And do you want this? Only you can decide, Fiona. Meanwhile, we've got a contract to honour on Friday, so I suggest you go through those new tapes, make sure you're happy with them. And then I'll see you over the road at half seven, OK? And keep your pecker up. Jacket 
look mad. Look, stop worrying. You look great. Now come on, I will be late. Oh well, back to the grind. You going to work? Uh, well, I'm going to go to Better Bass first because I'm not until three. Well, I'll give you a lift if you want. Uh, I'm going that way. Yeah? Well, yeah, I've got to call into the bank. Uh, no, no, you're all right. I'll walk. Oh, suit yourself. Are you going now? Uh, yeah, well, I've got to be back over the road by two. All right, then, if you're sure. All right, well, just stay over here. So, what are we going to do? Oh, I don't know, Willie. Look, we can hire one. Hire one. Yeah, you know how much that's going to cost, then. Yes, but we'll get the job done, won't we? Yeah, then work's going to come flooding in if we cock this up, innit? Mind you, I suppose we could always ask our new boyfriend, after all. A few hundred quid them is just a drop in the ocean. Has she seen him? I don't know. Well, ask her. She's not going to need that money that you give her if she's got him, is she? Oh, behave yourself, will you? <sighs> well, we might as well go back and have some dinner, unless there's something else you'd rather do. No, that'd be great. Of course, you've uh, you've not seen my palatial pad, have you? No, uh, is it big? <laughs> Prepare to be underwhelmed. You, um... Uh, you are all right, aren't you, Tracy? I mean, you've, you've not come back to give me some terrible news. No, I'm fine. I've got some news, but, well, it's not terrible. I just wanted to get you out of the Rovers first before I told you. Well, what is it? I'm getting married, Mum. Next month. I've come to invite you to a wedding. spring but we thought why wait we both want it and we weren't going on the honeymoon till next summer anyway so and uh, there's no other reason for the urgency don't worry I'm not pregnant oh, well that's a relief anyway is that all parents think about oh no we uh, we worry about 101 other things as well as you'll find out for yourself I've no doubt so are you pleased then or what well yeah I'm, I'm still trying to take it all in. I, I mean, I don't know the bloke. Oh, he's really nice. I'm sure, but, um, well, what sort of chap is he? Is he like any of your other boyfriends? Craig, for example. You mean, is he a layabout? Well... No, he's not like Craig at all. He's got a well-paid job for a start. Carpet fitter? Well, he earns enough to pay a mortgage and run a van. So, uh, how long have you known him? We met when I first moved down there, so it's about six months. He came to do some work in the shop. He's from up here. Yeah? Withington. He's been down there for nearly a year. Oh, so his family are up here, then? Oh, yeah. Well, he, he sounds like a really nice lad, from what you say. 25, Mum. He's hardly a lad. No. Look... <laughs> The one thing that worries me is the six months. You don't get to know somebody in that time, not properly. We know each other well enough to want to get married. Anyway, you know now, whether you approve or not. I just wanted to let you know. And I'm very glad you did. <sighs> Listen, if you love each other and you think you can make it work... We do. Well, then, go ahead. You don't need my permission anyway. I've got your blessing, then. Yeah, of course you have. I wish you all the best. Then you'll come to the wedding. Oh, you try and stop me. Fine. Yvonne's chairing it. She was very nice. And what did they ask you? Nothing you can't handle. Wish me luck. Oh, 
Oh, don't let me interrupt your lunch. Oh, no, I can wait. Mm, but you couldn't. <laughs> well, it's like you said the other day. I mean, who am I fooling? Pretending to live in the flat when I spend all my time here. I said all that to make you see you were doing wrong. Yeah, well, I don't see it like that, as I think you know. But you've kept the flat on. Yeah. So you're going to go on using Jeff's name to cheat money from the authorities, are you? I don't need this, Carol. Ah, well, it's true. And what's more, half that street knows. Only if you've told them. That bookie pointed me straight here, and if he knows, you can bet your life everyone else does. He knows I live here, that's all. I mean, he doesn't even know that yet. You mean you're not going to tell him? You're just using his flat as a convenience address. What are you planning to do? Huh? Snitch on me? Don't be cheap, Claire. This is your conscience we're talking about here. Exactly. It's my conscience. And don't think I haven't wrestled with it a thousand times, cos I have. I've got to think about Becky now. I've got to move forward. And what kind of an example is this, Satina? Well, she's old enough to make up her own mind on that. So, living illegally on a dead man's pension is best you can do for her. You can load it how you like. But for the time being, this is what I've decided. And for the time being, this is where I'm going to stay. It's a nightmare, Rita. I'm practically housebound. Well, like you say, you can get things out of proportion. Thanks. Right. Here are, Rita. Oh, Thanks, you love. Love. And there's Thank yours. You. My love. Do you know, there are two things that show who has the power in a family, Rita. One, who has the remote control for the telly, and two, who drives. It used to be 2 nil in our place, but I've evened it out a bit. I thought you liked being chauffeured around. Oh, chauffeured, yes, but, I mean, hanging about, waiting for his nibs to get moving, that's some at all. Well, it won't take long for your ankle to heal, will it, Al? That's the least of my worries. I've got all this business at Swansea to sort out, haven't I? I might never drive again. Oh! Ah, you won't be laughing then, it'll be you to do it. Well, if it is, I might give Brian a ring. Hey? See how he's fixed. I mean, he's able-bodied with a clean licence. You'll do no such thing. Yeah, well, just get yourself sorted out, then I won't have to, will I? I mean, you've only yourself to blame if I do. Do you mind if I join you? No, please do. But you don't have to put that away on my account. Oh, I can read that any time. Are you having problems? I need to change the washer on the tap in my room. I can't seem to get it loose. I thought I might pick up a few tips on how to budget. Well, why don't you get Bill Webster to have a look? He lives next door to you, doesn't he? Oh, downstairs, yes. I was going to try him last night only. Only what? Oh, only you, you, you don't like to disturb people, do you, of an evening? No, you don't. Especially if you think they're enjoying themselves. <laughs> Best left alone. Well, I think it's marvellous news. Congratulations. Thanks. The Saturday before Christmas? Yep. No chance of meeting him before then. Well, not unless you come down to London. We're both really busy at the moment. We're trying to sort out his flat for when I move in there. Although, I'm practically living there already. Well, well, well. If it isn't the Casanova of Weatherfield Comp, I hear you have to knock them out these days before you can get your wicked way with them. Still. I like a man that never gives up, but be careful with that fighting spirit. Could get you into trouble one of these days. What was all that about? That was about the small horizons of everyday provincial life. You did the best thing moving to London. So it went well then? Oh, I think so. You can never tell. I thought I was doing well in my last job. But... <laughs> so when would they let you know? End it week. Did they ask how ambitious you are? Oh, yes. Me too. What did you say? Well, you have to say that you are. You see, they've a very high turnover. They want people who they think will stay. And why did they leave? And no real career structure. If you don't get the right openings, you can start to drift. Lots of girls leave to do other things, or they just get married and have kids. <laughs> so it's just something useful to do in the meantime, then? He's pretty Yvonne still in it, though, and she's, what, 45? Now she's made a career of it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, lots of people do. That's what I want, don't you? Well, one step at a time, I think. I'll, um, I'll go with the superstar.
Well, thank you for telling her about it. Oh, not at all. <laughs> it's funny that this morning, wasn't it? What's that? A Raquel. Getting cold feet. And she's normally so confident, so certain about where she's going, what she wants out of life. Right. Still. That's what it's like, I suppose. When you get to know someone, you see all these hidden sides to their personality, don't you? Yeah, certainly do. It's a different man. Responsibility, Mavis. That's what Des Barnes has been wanting for a long time. With any luck, he'll learn to grow up. He'll stay there now. It might be the end of his childish pranks. From what you were saying about Becky this morning, the role of jester has passed to her. <laughs> Lumber, indeed. <laughs> uh, childish jokes from a child you can tolerate. They seem to have a steadying influence. Best thing that's happened next door for a long time. <laughs> Little bird tells me didn't go too well last night. Ever so slightly. Old saying, if you fall off a horse, get back in the saddle again as quick as you can, otherwise you might be too scared to ride again. You go for it, love. Don't let them get at you. Yeah, well, I wouldn't give to be in your shoes, I'd Oh, I. Why is that, then? Living on your own. Cracker there, living over at road. There when you want to, <laughs> not unless. <laughs> I take a size 10, Jack. Oh. Shoe. What I mean is, try them on first. They might not be what you thought they were. Here, Alan. Here's one. Make the most of it. There'll be something tap we're up in a month away we're going. Not at all. Listen, there's a van in here will do us rightly. That one in Crumpson. Well, there's one in here looks all right. Huh? Yeah, well, let's just give this a ring first, see if it's available. Eh? What's the point, Jim? We've got no money. We had no money. That's all changed now, will you? How cool? Well, er... Uh... You know that check I paid Liz uh, last Friday? She's giving it back? No. Well, sort of. Well, not exactly, but it amounts to the same thing anyway. Look, uh, I phoned the bank this afternoon to cancel the check, so even if she paid it on Monday, she can't get any money out. So, um, as long as you are, Willie, things are looking up, so they are.